So I remember when I first started my podcast, having that epiphany moment where I was like, oh, shoot, I don't even know where to find guests for my show. I started this show wanting to interview some top name entrepreneurs, but I'm like, where do I look? And most of you who are interview style podcasters are probably asking that same question. And so a lot of us will go and you know Google it or get on YouTube or what have you, but there's really a very simple way to get amazing guests for your show. And I want to show you two different ways. The simplest way is to just use podmatch.com. There's a lot of these out here, but this is the one that I think vets their guests the best and allows you to really determine if they're a great guest by looking at their profile. The second way is just a direct outreach approach. So we're going to cover the first one first. So Podmatch. This platform is free. They do have a paid option. I think it's like $35 a month or something. It's very, very cheap. But this is a simple way to basically vet guests. So what I will do is um, when I come into this platform, you could just search based off of simple categories. So let's just say you're um, an investor podcast, right? Let's look up investor. Actually, scratch that. Let's look up investing. We will search that term. It pulls up a whole list of people who cover those topics. Now I'm going to pull up Brian Thorpe here actually, because I know him and he's a fantastic guest. If you ever want to have him on, you're welcome, Brian. <laughs> so basically when you look at their profile here on Podmatch, this is what I love is if my internet will load here, there we go, is it actually pulls up all of the information about them that you would need to know in order to actually get them on a podcast. Now, if you were to just reach out on LinkedIn or, or, you know, kind of spray and pray messages, odds are a, they're going to be missed or B they're going to be um, not received well. Right. So basically what we, what we like to do is say, okay, let's figure out if they're a good fit before we reach out. Because I know for myself, when I've reached out on LinkedIn, sometimes some people look good, but we don't actually know if they are a good guest, right? When they're on Podmatch. Most of the time, these people have already been interviewed before, right? This isn't their first rodeo. They're a good guest already. But on top of that, through Podmatch, we can figure out how likely we are to actually see a boost in our engagement based on this person um, as, as a promoter of our show by being one of the guests. So what we like to do is we actually, we like to read through the bio and make sure, okay, they're actually a, a decent fit. Now, I'm the type of person, I just kind of skim through it and pick out a few points saying, okay, like... They've hit a million dollars in sales. They've had multiple companies. They're a highly successful person. And I know, okay, they're, they're going to be a good fit on paper, but how do we figure out if they're going to be a good fit in reality? So what we do is we look down here and we look at their follower count. Now, this isn't always 100% accurate, but what I like to do is I like to look here. Okay. You know, if they're over 5,000, they're going to be a good guest, right? But most of them haven't listed all of their social media accounts. So Brian has. But what you can do is you can actually go log in directly to their specific pages and see how good of a guest they are. Maybe they have a Facebook group. That's something we're looking for. If they have a Facebook group, those are highly engaged active users who will follow any recommendation that Brian, for example, will send their way, right? So, you know, he has 4,000 people following him on this Facebook group. I'm guessing that that 5,900 isn't accurate, right? So this is his Facebook page. Let's look at his LinkedIn. We go down and look at how many connections he has on LinkedIn. If it will load, man, this internet's killing me today. So let's scroll down. So he has 1,700 followers there. If you can't see it there, you can actually go down here and it will say under activity how many followers they have. So he's got 1,700 plus 4,000 people basically. And then we haven't even touched his Instagram or his Twitter or his website. We're looking for places that we know, okay, this person has an active audience that. Can, uh, that participates in their content. So what I would recommend for you for looking for a great guest is to not just find somebody who has a big following because social media people don't typically take action from social media. That's a very, very low percentage. But what you want to look for is, does this person have a group? Do they have a LinkedIn or a Facebook group of some sort where they house a list of people who they have direct control over? Do they have a strong email list? You know, a great way to look at that is go over to their website and say, okay, you know what? Do they have a place that I can come in here and give them my email? That's a huge piece of it, right? And if we see that and we say, okay, they've got a good email list. If somebody has 700 people on an email list, I will take that over 100,000 followers on Instagram any day of the week because the conversion rates will be significantly higher for people coming over and actually listening to your show, subscribing, leaving you reviews than if they just post on social media, right? The posting on social media is kind of that necessary evil, but it does not 
it's not what's going to grow your show. I'm just going to tell you that right off the bat. What's going to grow your show is finding incredible guests like this who can promote you and they can go through and actually promote you to their specific list that they own and they control and people actively follow them. So groups and email lists are two of the big things. So there's a lot of other information here that you can decide, hey, this is, this is the person that I want to actually work with um, and have on my show. But uh, I would honestly say to you that that's the easiest, fastest way to get 10 to 50 guests right off the bat, just to kind of kick off your show. But let's say you're like, you know what? I want Grant Cardone on my show. I want John Lee Dumas on my show. I want Russell Brunson on my show. If you look at those high, high level people to bring on your show, you have to use the very simple dream 100 concept, right? It's that process of actually finding people who you know are that dream 100 that you'd love to work with, but then you need to actually approach them in a non-salesy way. Now, the beautiful thing about having a platform is you're going to increase your rates by just of, of people responding to you by just having um, a platform, having a podcast. So what I typically recommend for people is shoot for the stars. Don't put, you know, well, I, I know this is a person who could, could maybe could come on my show, right? But, but the thing is, guys, when I first started my podcast, I had my first billionaire with a B come on the show when I had five downloads, five downloads, not 500, 5,000, five downloads. They came on my show. They didn't care how many followers I had. They just knew that coming on my show would be valuable to them because I had an audience. It was five people, but it was an audience, right? So I want you to be thinking about that when you're, when you're reaching out to these people. So I want you to think about this message though. This is one that we use for, for getting onto, onto shows. So when I first started my podcast, got that first billionaire to come on my show, it was by using this simple process. I made a list of 100 people that I knew would be great fits for my show. I said, okay, I want to bring on um, Steve Sims, Josh Steinle, some of these big name people in our industry who I knew would be fantastic to bring on my show, but they might also be great clients or people I could partner with. And just so you know, all of those people have ended up becoming either clients or partners in one shape, one in a way, shape or form. So the, the process that we do with it though, is we make a list of hundred people and then we actually reach out to them directly on LinkedIn. Don't use any other platform, just LinkedIn. The reason why you use LinkedIn is because Virtually nobody has somebody managing their own LinkedIn, okay? But the cool part is that most of these successful people are still using LinkedIn because this is where they do their research for their executive teams or for um, new hires or what have you, or for a lot of them, that's where they consume content. So that's the place we reach out to them. The first thing is to dive into their content. Spend five minutes looking through their, their LinkedIn profile. So let me just pull one up here. Let's go to LinkedIn. And what we do is, okay, we pull from our list. We say, okay, we have, we have uh, you know, 100 people on this list. And let's just say, I'm just going to put John Lee Dumas as one of the people on our list, right? So John Lee Dumas is the guy who started, he's the host of Entrepreneurs on Fire, the podcast. Um, but I wouldn't just immediately message John, right? What I would do is I would come down here to his featured page. And also, that guy kind of looks like his brother. Um, <laughs> we'd also come down here to um, the activity and we'd click on his most recent posts, right? So what you want to do is look at their most recent post and say, okay, what's, what's the topic of this post? What do I really like about this? And then I'm going to teach you this message that got us an 85% response rate in 48 hours, okay? This is the message that works every single time. So when I first launched my podcast, we had 100 people. I messaged all 100 of them. 85 responded within the first two days. All of them were positive yeses, okay? The other 15 responded over the, I think it was two people never responded, but we had 13 other people respond over the next two weeks, okay? So this is what you do, is you look at their piece of content, figure out what the topic is, and then you message them, right? So let's go to John's page here. If we're not connected, we need to actually connect with him. So it says I'm following him here. He, does, he doesn't even have the option to connect with him. But what we do, oops, is we come over here and we go to message. And what you'll do is you'll reach out to John. And um, anyways, I've already messaged him and it's covering up on my face. <laughs> but anyways, what we say to him is we say, okay, you say, hey, John, I just saw this piece of content where you talked about leadership in business. I loved it. I think my audience would love it. Would you be willing to come share that with my audience on the Lucky Titan podcast? That's it. There's no links. There's no sales pitch. It's literally just like, I love this piece of content. Would you be willing to come share it with my audience? You don't need to throw numbers around or anything. You just say, do you want to share it with my audience? You'll get a response rate with this. I promise you. Now there's two things that happen though. Typically, if they don't see it, it doesn't mean they don't want to come on your show. It just means it got buried guys. When you get to a certain point, I mean, I know for myself, I get like a hundred messages a day on LinkedIn right now. 
I do not answer all of those. I'll be completely honest with you because it takes me too long. But the ones who will bump it to the top of my inbox, I keep seeing that name. I'm like, okay, this is an important message. I will read it and I will respond to those. And it's the same thing with all these influencers. So you don't need to be pushy or try to like guilt trip them into it. What you want to do is you want to message them. And if they don't respond within 48 hours, you message them one more time saying, Hey, I know you're probably busy. Just wanted to see if you were interested in coming on the show. That bumps it to the top of their inbox. If they don't respond, try that two more times by just saying something kind, like, Hey, I'd really love to have you on my show. I know I'm being pushy, but it's because my audience would love to hear from you. Little messages like that. Instead of just saying, just pushing this to the top of your inbox, you want to remind them why they should be interested in it. But then the second thing that happens is they say yes. And you say, you send them your booking link or whatever to come on your show and they don't actually fill it out. Now, this happens to me all the time. I say yes to shows. I'm willing to go on them, but then it gets buried and I forget about it. I really do. You know, it's not, you know, it's not every day you get asked, asked to come onto a show, but it gets buried, right? And if I forgot whose name it was who messaged me, you know, no offense to that person, but I wasn't able to remember how to actually contact them. So when they message me back again, I'm like, oh, great. I didn't have to dig through my inbox. So you want to be following up with them until they book. If they say yes, just hound them keep sending them a message saying, Hey, I'm so excited for this interview. Make sure you book your time. Hey, I haven't seen you book a time. Make sure you book the interview. Little things like that, where you're not being a jerk. You're just, you're just following up, making sure that they know that you're, um, you're aware and you actually want them to come on your show. If you'll do that, number one, they know it's not an automation. Okay. But number two is that they will respond. Okay. This is such an incredible script. It's not um, anything spectacular. It's just being human. Now, I know a lot of you are going to look at this and say, okay, I could outsource this and hand this off to my team. And the truth is you could, but the dumb thing about outsourcing it to your team is that it doesn't get that same individual touch. Okay. Putting it, giving it to somebody who's a VA who speaks perfect English. It doesn't matter. They're not you. It's good for it to be you because when you have that next conversation, let's say you're like, Hey, John, I love this piece of content. Can we talk about it? Then you hop on the call and he'll be like, Hey, what'd you love about that piece of content? And I go, um, I don't remember it, right? Because I never read it or listened to it, then you know, we're kind of we're kind of at a standstill there, right? You lose that credibility. Where if you'll do that yourself, it'll take you 15 to 20 minutes a day to do this for like a week. Spend a week, do this, or just book out one day of your time. You'll find that this will quickly scale the amount of people who want to come on your show, but you'll also get the guests that you actually want to come on and not just a bunch of random people. Okay. So that's the number two strategy. That's the one that I would highly recommend all of you do, but I know that 90% of you aren't going to do it because you're going to say, Oh, I don't have time for it, but I want to incentivize you. When you first, when I first started my podcast, started bringing people onto my show, I brought on one guy, his name's Josh Steinley. And I said, you know, Hey, I'm brand new at this. You're one of my first episodes. Um, who else should I bring on my show? He recommended me 40 guests. And these were people from hundred millionaires to billionaires who would come on my show. And I had every single one of them come on my show. But then after all of that, we have literally produced millions in sales from our podcast because we're bringing on the right guests because we decide, Hey, we can partner with them. We can, um, they can sell directly to them, but it creates an opportunity to network like no other place, no other networking group or anything that you can do. So I promise you, if you will go and actually step out of your shell, do this outreach, it'll be the number one thing you do in your business every single week. So I hope that helps make, I would, I would hope that all of you will actually go out and get some really important guests on your show, some big name guests, but also some people who, you know, are going to bless the lives of your audience.